ESG, of course, has become a buzzword on the street as companies face pressures from investors to be more transparent. On Squawk Box yesterday, though, Virgin Galactic Chairman and Social Capital CEO Chamath Palihapiti has sounded off on the movement. Here's what he had to say. ESG, real or marketing? It's a complete fraud. Complete fraud. It's so ridiculous. Governance has been addressed. That's useful. But, you know, this idea that you're going to get a stamp that says, oh, listen, like, you know, my supplier, you know, I've offset their carbon credits and now I understand my, it's a joke. It's jargon. Joining us right now to discuss all of this is Hal Lambert of Point Bridge Capital and Christian McCormick, Allianz Global Investor, Senior ESG Strategist. I'm going to, I'm going to start with the ESG Strategist since it's in your title and Jamal just called what you're doing, Christian, a fraud. Well, it was certainly an interesting choice of words. Um, and obviously, at Allianz Global Investors, we would strongly disagree with that. And we think it's a bit of a broad mischaracterization. Um, and it's a kind of a simplified and antiquated view of what ESG is. I mean, first and foremost, taking a step back, I mean, at Allianz Global Investors, like any asset manager, right, we have a fiduciary duty to our clients, right? And our goal is to generate competitive returns for our clients. So ESG has to play an important role in that, or otherwise we wouldn't incorporate that. And so for us, when you take a step back and ask, all right, what exactly is ESG? You know, ESG is a set of data and a set of factors. Right. And the question then becomes, how are you researching those factors? How are you applying those factors to different investment processes? But when you look at really what a modern company has become, and I mean the growth of intangible assets, the growth of intellectual capital, the use of technology, a much better awareness and understanding of the role that climate plays, right. it begins to make much more sense of why ESG is important but, there. But, but Christian, and so we and actually, I want, yes. I want Hal to jump into this, but let me just ask you this. I get the governance piece, which is exactly what Chamath was talking about. And by the way, I also applaud and get the leadership piece uh, that so many companies are pursuing when it comes to climate and these other issues. However, on their own, acting almost idiosyncratically, if you will, it's unclear whether they can make a um, genuine dent in the system. And so then the question becomes the cost to the company to, for that leadership. And I just ask you whether it's worth it. It absolutely is worth it from the standpoint of generating those competitive returns. Again, we, when we engage with these companies, it's not about bringing carrots. We're not meeting with company management. And we had about 448 different ESG-related company engagements with boards and executive management last year. It's about speaking their language. It's about here are ESG factors. Let's look at the risk-reward characteristics of each of these factors and understand what plays a key role for your company as it pertains to the stock price. Um, if we can have a positive benefit for some of, say, our sustainability sustainability-driven um, clients, that's very important. But for right. us, it's much more of a risk mitigation tool. So Hal, we don't look at it the you, same way. How? what do you make it? There's obviously been a, a number of companies in the past two months that have come out with uh, very ambitious plans around climate. Um, some of include, some uh, are about investing in all sorts of uh, new technologies. Others about buying carbon offsets. Is that, in your mind, marketing? Or do you think that this is uh, genuinely um, a financially important step? Well, no, I don't think it's a financially important step. In fact, I would say that ESG is a fraud, uh, but probably for a different reason than, than what you heard yesterday. It's a fraud because it's not better for shareholders. It's not better for stockholders. Look, J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs both announced they're not going to do lending in the Arctic for drilling. I mean, how is that better for the shareholders of Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan? It can't be. In fact, I was talking to Dan Sullivan, the senator, just last night from Alaska. He's very upset about this. He said he's going to recommend that they cut off the Sovereign Wealth Fund of Alaska, which is $70 billion, to no longer do business with J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs. Yeah, so that can't it, be good I'll for them. I'll flip it around. I believe that there are pension funds and other large investors who might not do business with J.P. Morgan if they continued uh, to uh, operate and to continue to, to make loans uh, for some of those similar projects, no? no well, I, mean, I, I don't see that. Look, they just did both, both ends of it. Well, they just did the IPO for Aramco for Saudi Arabia. I mean, so they're they're worried about climate, but they're going to do one of the largest, the largest IPO ever in oil and gas. Look, oil and gas is the most important sector of this economy. Period. You think the coronavirus would disrupt things, or is disrupting things? Imagine if they, if the left got what they wanted, the environmental extremists got what they wanted, which is to cut off all funding for oil and gas and shut down fossil fuels. Imagine what that would happen to this country. You, you can walk in tomorrow. If your Facebook page isn't working, that's fine. You walk in tomorrow and your power doesn't work, you can't get your gas at your car, that, the, the, the economy is going to shut down. Christian, so, what's your no. reaction to that? 
Um, it's absolutely not about punishing a company uh, for, say, what their carbon footprint is. I think Hal actually raises some interesting points. I mean, we at Allianz, right, we're an asset manager, so we have to meet the needs of our clients from a fiduciary standpoint. When you look at, say, the announcement of BlackRock or the examples mentioned with Goldman Sachs or J.P. Morgan, as firms, they have to answer to their own shareholders. But we're a little bit different in that we have to answer to our clients. And we actually think that looking at ESG factors for both short, medium, and long-term risk assessment of a company as it pertains to the stock price is extremely important. Well, look, and we have look, a lot that, of data. Yeah. That's fine. I agree with what you, you can do what you want with your money you're managing and the people are investing with you. But Goldman and JP Morgan have a duty. They have a, a, it's by law. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see lawsuits happening now with shareholders on this stuff because, look, they have by law the duty to, to, to stockholders. It, ha, it was put into place in 1919. It was reaffirmed in 2010. The, the case law is very clear on this. Stockholders are who their primary responsibility is to, Al, not this global community. Al, we're going to uh, have to invite you and Christian back to continue this debate. Uh, the world does seem to be moving in all sorts of different directions, including now moving more towards stakeholders. So, But you have a very interesting point about the legality uh, of this very issue, and I do imagine uh, it'll end up in courts at some point, and we'll see how that gets litigated. Thank you both.